Um, but first, I think we need to talk about this uh, this franchise tag window that we have now entered. It started yesterday, which was Tuesday. If you guys are watching the video version of this, it was at least two days ago. We are on Thursday if you guys are watching the video. But today in the world that I am being recorded uh, is Wednesday. So it started yesterday. Uh, we have not seen any come in yet, at least not that I've seen. Uh, I also was at work all day. So keep that in mind. I don't only check Twitter, you know, I do other things. And so I haven't seen any come in at all. Uh, but if we're we're looking at the LA Rams here, which is what we do here on Ram Showcase, uh, there's there's two candidates in my mind that are possible to get the the franchise tag. And we talked about this last week. I'm not gonna like keep the secret here. It's it's linebacker Leonard Floyd and it's safety John Johnson. Everybody else, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It wouldn't make a lot of sense to put a franchise tag on them make them the highest or the average of the highest paid five at their position. That wouldn't make a lot of sense for any of the other names uh, that the Rams have coming up as 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 free agents, as unrestricted free agents, such as like the Morgan Foxes of the world and such. Uh, so I, I, that, I just don't think that that's something that the, the Rams would do. I don't think that's a course they would take. Some of these guys I do think get extended. Uh, I think that the Rams do wiggle around. Uh, it's always possible to get under the cap. There's always ways you know, I know that we're over the cap right now, but there's always a way to get that number back down to where it's legal according to league rules. So don't worry about that at all. I do, however, think that some of these guys will be back getting extended, even though we are currently over the cap and will need to be under the cap by March 17th at two o'clock Joe time, which is uh, the start of the new league year, which would be one o'clock LA time, Ram time and uh, two o'clock Joe time four for you uh, New Yorkers and uh, the rest of you guys on that coast over there. Uh, you guys can do your powers of deduction for the central time zone if you guys need to do that. So the franchise tag, uh, the window's now open. Uh, it's going to be open for, for a little bit of time here uh, up until the, the 17th. And I just don't see this being used. Like I said, the two candidates are John Johnson and Leonard Floyd. I just don't think it gets used this year by the LA Rams. I don't, I don't think that... That the, the Rams uh, fork out that money on a franchise tag. I think that if the, if the Rams do want John Johnson or Leonard Floyd back, I think it would be in the form of an extension, not a, a franchise tag. I also do, though, in, in fairness, I do think that both of these players walk. I think that we we let them both go. And honestly, and like I said, I've said this a few times on the show, actually, I really do think that both of these guys go to the Chargers. And, and a big part of that is now that Brandon Staley is over there. Uh, but I think that they, I think they both fit in over there. Uh, the the Chargers have they they can afford both of these guys. They would pay for Leonard overpay for uh, Leonard Floyd. Anybody would overpay for Leonard Floyd at this point, though. And it's not try, I'm not trying to knock Leonard Floyd. I just I, I think that the the way that the Rams defense is set up with guys like Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald, I mean those two levels having one of the top may, maybe the the top it. At each respective position, maybe maybe Ramsey's the best corner in the game. That title typically only lasts for about three years, uh, three four years uh, for somebody who's really at their peak. Like, do you remember like when Aqib Talib was at the peak, or when it was Revis Island at the peak? You know, uh, that really only lasted a couple of years. So we'll see if uh, if Ramsey can hold it down. But he might be the best at that position today. And Aaron Donald, you know, he's he's my age, which makes me real sad. But it's. He, he's also, I mean, I don't think there's really too much debate that could be had on him being the best the best defensive lineman. There are names that you could throw into that argument, but I don't think, I, I think that you could always win the argument with Aaron Donald. Uh, and, and I think that argument is one on tape. It's not one with words. It's not one with three defensive player of the year awards. It, it's not one with any of that stuff. It's one with the tape. And if you watch him play, I mean, there's no plays off. It's insane how fast he can get around these guys and he's stronger than everybody else on the field every time he's on the field so I, I think you can win those debates with tape but that being said I think that that plays into the fact that Leonard Floyd had a really good season his best season as a pro under Brandon Staley who the only reason Floyd played for the Rams was because of Brandon Staley he coached him in Chicago and I think that 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 plays a big factor uh, also another factor that we talked about last week we touched on it uh, briefly we'll touch on it briefly again here is that uh, Dante Fowler had a, a, a strong season with the LA Rams and then went to Atlanta and played just okay 
You know, he didn't really light anything up up down there. So I, I think that those things do need to be considered. Anybody, I think, would overpay for Leonard Floyd right now. I'm not going to be super sad if he does not return back to the L.A. Rams. Uh, but I, I, he brings a lot. I mean, he he fits in with the L.A. Rams, but so did Dante Fowler. So I would like to have him back. I think that if he goes anywhere else, he's going to get he's going to be overpaid for what he will produce uh, in that sense. John Johnson, he's going to get paid and he's going to deserve it all because that guy is awesome. Uh, and I've seen some fans talk about John Johnson that he had a down year. I'm not sure what you guys are seeing with John Johnson having a down year. His stats maybe dipped a little bit, but that's because he's better in coverage. Why do you think Jalen Ramsey, who we literally just talked about, I said was maybe the best cornerback of the game, had one interception this year? It's because no one's going to him. You don't throw on a guy that's that insane, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I think that that has to be taken into consideration. I don't think John Johnson had a down year by any means at all. Statistically, maybe had, you know, fewer interceptions, fewer pass breakups. Uh, than his averages, but I, I think that that really plays into the fact that a the Rams secondary was absolutely mean. It was it was rude to quarterbacks all around the league, and John Johnson was a big part of that. Uh, as so uh, obviously so was so was Jalen Ramsey, so was uh, you know Jordan Fuller, so was Troy Hill, so was Darius Williams. So a lot of names factor into that. John Johnson though, amazing player. I think he's going to get paid really really well wherever he goes, and I think he deserves it. I don't think that the Rams can afford him. I think he played himself out of the Rams because we are already in a weird cap situation that no one truly understands how it's all going to work out all the time. I just know that there's always a way to fix it. There's always a way that you're going to be fine. And I kind of hang on to that because I know that let's make a deal Sneed over there is going to do a fine job and he's going to he's going to work some numbers. And and I'm guessing that guys like Ramsey and Donald and Cup and Woods restructure their deals, get some of that money transferred into bonus money, stuff like that, and lower that cap number. I, I just think that that's what happens. But I would love to see John Johnson back as an LA Ram. I don't think any of us would not want to see John Johnson back as an LA Ram. He's an amazing player. Uh, but either way, I, I think that uh, I, I don't think the Rams bring either of these guys back, but I also don't think that the, the franchise tag is used. There is one situation that I could see with John Johnson is if the Rams already know that he is getting a lot of attention, is trying to slap on like a franchise tag and then trade, like a, just a, the, your good old fashioned tag and trade scenario where we would kind of put another team in a weird situation of having to work a deal. But either way, I mean, we would get something out of it, you know, something at all out of it. And that could be something that happens quick. It could be something like, hey, okay, we got, uh, if we tag and we got this trade deal set up over here. I also don't think that that would include a lot of draft picks. I realize that some fans are like, let's tag Johnson, trade him for a one. I don't think that that happens uh, for a couple of reasons. I don't think the Rams really value ones that much, which I think is a little bit clear. I shouldn't be blowing anybody's mind with that. Me saying that sentence shouldn't make you at home be like, what? Why wouldn't we value ones? It's very clear that the Rams really don't value ones, but other teams do. And that's why we're so willing to give, give them away is because, hey, if you want a one, that's a, that's a, coin toss on if that guy is going to be decent or not and you know if if we can trade two coin tosses of a guy that might be good might might contribute for a guy that we know can contribute such as a Matt Stafford we can get rid of two ones two coin tosses that are probably well, Rams are a good team right now probably 20s hopefully 30s picks here in the next couple of years uh, that you throw away those two coin tosses for a guy that you think is a better quarterback that gives you a better chance to win more games and bump up those numbers as far as the the making that draft pick a little bit later, you do that. And I don't see any reason that, that fans would be upset about these trades coming in. Um, but uh, that that's one thing that I, I have seen that a few times a fan saying, let's let's tag John Johnson, try to get a one out of it. I don't want a one. I, we don't need them. I mean, first round picks are... I it, it might just be the Rams fan in me saying this, but first round picks are overrated and uh, we don't, I, we're doing fine without them. Without a first round pick, the Rams are going to the playoffs 75% of the time. And until that comes back and bites us, I'm, I'm here for it guys. I'm here for the, uh, I, I'm here for the trading, the ones and just living our lives, going to the playoffs and, and the one year, by the way, cause that's four years now that we haven't had a first round pick that one year was a year that the Rams went 9-7 and seven and barely missed. And if Greg Zuerlein kicks the the field goal against the Seattle Seahawks in Week 4 in Seattle to win that game, 
then the Rams are a playoff team. I mean, of course, if that happens, the rest of the season changes. But still, if that kick goes in, the Rams are more than likely in the postseason. And also, it was one year before the the added playoff team. So if the added playoff team was a thing in that year, the Rams also would have been to the playoffs. So the 75%, it could it could have very easily become 100% if just a couple of small things happened. So I, I'm not hating it right now. And until it comes back to bite the Rams, I'm okay with, with giving up the ones. So you're sitting there at home, you just finished watching a clip of Rams Showcase, and you're wondering, what the heck do I do now? Well, I'll tell you what you do now. You subscribe. All right, and then also, you watch something else that you might like. Watch the full podcast. I'll link it below. Enjoy your guys' night. Peace! Go Rams!